Hello, folks. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're going to do just a quick check here. If you can go to the questions box and say, hey, Nick, we can hear you. We can see your obscene shirt. And uh, everything's good. Signals are loud and clear. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's do some sound checks for Faith. Hello, hello. Can everyone hear me okay? Let us know. Yo, perfecto. And Rebecca. Hello, everyone. Testing. One, two, three. That's the best sound yet. Amazing. Perfect. Um, folks, we're going to get started in two minutes. Uh, which we just give everyone a few extra minutes to navigate, go to webinar, and work their way in. And uh, in the meanwhile, we do have a, uh, a bit of a tradition. If this is your first exclusive webinar ever, then you must go to the questions box and introduce yourself. Super easy. What's your name? What company are you coming in from? You're supposed to do like this with silent promise that you'll come to every webinar from now on, but you don't need to say anything there. That's just about. Um, but who's who's here for the first time and who is going to be the bravest person to say hello? And Rebecca, can you try proceeding in the meanwhile? Perfect. Awesome. And Faith, I'm going to give you Mouse approval as well. All right, let's give that a Cool. All right. Um, great. And we have Brent here from TR Data Strategies. All right. Hey, Brent. Nice meeting you. Thank you for joining. Guys, it is 2.02. I think we should get started. So thank you for joining. We're gonna share some tactics for using mainly owned media. We're gonna to get to exactly what that's all about in a few moments. First, let's do some intros. Um, those of you who don't know Exclusive, we are a performance agency. We primarily focus in e-commerce. We deploy omni-channel holistic strategies across multiple channels, and we execute across all of those needs. Hello, everyone. I'm Faith Galliardi, email marketing manager here at Exclusive. Been with the company for about three years now. Um, I have over 10 years of experience in the field, as well as a master's degree. Um, we currently serve email and SMS clients, well over 100. So lots of experience here that we can dive into and talk about for holiday strategy. Rebecca, on to you. Excellent. Hi, everyone. I am Rebecca Antonellis. I'm the director of the organic search team. Um, I've been here for 10 years, started as an SEO, um, and now oversee our SEO conversion content and email teams. Um, and yeah, just really excited to talk holiday, last minute items to kind of get in the door and own media and all that good stuff. I'll hand it over to Nick. I'm Nick Rajpal, I'm the VP of Marketing Sciences. I joined the company in 08 to help develop our solution side. And uh, I help work with companies that want to be our clients and try to define exactly what the right strategy is for them to grow. And if they sign off, then we implement. Fairly straightforward. And uh, hopefully get a chance to talk to some of you guys in the coming weeks. Um, so as we go into this, you know, we did we did want to try to emphasize a particular aspect of marketing where we could give you guys 11 techniques, but it's kind of uh, constrained in some way. And we thought it'd probably make a lot of sense for us to talk about owned media. After we give you guys the tactics, we're going to go ahead and explain why this was the main emphasis, what, what market pressures are telling us to focus on this. But first, not everyone knows what owned media is. Really simple, paid media, you always pay for it. So like your Google ads, 
yeah, so you've got it down to a perfect science. It's making a lot of money. You still have to keep paying for it. You don't really own that, right? Earned media is like SEO rankings. There's an algorithm change that happens tomorrow. You could potentially lose a lot of those earned rankings. But owned media is yours. Your customer database, your website, the user experience, your SMS list. These are assets that not only can no one take away from you, but you also could potentially sell part and parcel if you ever decide to sell your business. It's part of the value of your, your company. So just quick question. Um, what parts of your marketing do you emphasize the most, or what type of media, rather, do you emphasize the most? I'm gonna give everyone just another few moments here because people are answering really quickly. Go five, four, Three, two, one, let's share everyone's responses. Surprising, um, only 8% focus on SEO. That's kind of their most important type of media. 54% of you are doing the Google ads, the Amazon ads, the Facebook ads. 38% of you think own media is my, my most important uh, place to focus on, which is great. And it's nice to, to kind of see what your peers are doing as well, right? So with that, we dive right into our 11 ingenious owned media tactics for a record holiday sale. Excellent. All right, so we will go through um, the timeline and some of these recommendations that myself and Faith and our teams put together. Um, so with that, our holiday timeline, um, you know, September has come and gone. And just like that, we are in Q4. Um, so biggest recommendations for Q4. Um, one, if you have not already created a Black Friday, Cyber Monday and coupon pages, create those. Um, even if you don't offer coupons, we see a lot of success um, in clients taking that traffic away from other like affiliate and other coupon sites. Um, you can look at perhaps Zappos is an example of a site that offers no coupons. Um, Nordstrom is another example of a site that doesn't offer coupons but still ranks number one for their brand term um, plus coupon related queries. Um, so create that, put it in your footer. Um, and then Google has also provided guidelines and best practices for creating a Black Friday and Cyber Monday landing page. Um, and this is creating this will open you up to appear in their deals carousel um, that will come out around uh, holiday. So definitely have those created crawlable, indexable. Um, check out Google's post on it on their Webmaster Central blog. They provide details on image specs and things like that to include um, within that landing page. Um, also, SEO related, update all of your holiday related content and seasonal content. So categories, gift guides, get all that updated. Make sure that the year is for holiday 2021 and not 2020. You can do a quick crawl using Screaming Frog to identify pages that might still mention last year. Um, that's a nice quick way to pull out that information and prioritize your pages. Um, on the email side of things, um, October 20th, so a week from today, is the last day um, to request a dedicated IP address in Klaviyo um, for forming a list. Um, so if you haven't already set up your email campaigns with Klaviyo, talk to us and we can help you with that. Um, and then October 27th, latest date, you should start um, warming your email lists. If you haven't, again, if you're brand new to email, um, definitely get that started sooner rather than later so you don't end up blacklisted. Um, next for November, um, focus on your sale flyout and maybe add that Black Friday, Cyber Monday section into that sale flyout just so it's more readily accessible for um, crawlers to find your Black Friday, Cyber Monday page and so that it's crawled as it's updated. Um, 
December, make sure you're monitoring your inventory levels. And if you have planned email campaigns or SMS campaigns that speak to specific products, make sure you have those products in stock before you send those campaigns. Um, and lastly, in January, um, update all your signup forms and flows as needed to reflect post-holiday, remove any Black Friday, Cyber Monday mentions, things like that. Um, so this just reflects the, that exact information kind of week by week and when we would recommend those deadlines. Um, so this presentation will be available after um, the webinar is over. So print this out, hang it on your desk and refer to it as needed. The additional items in here do include recommended dates to test. So for email SMS, you know, creating and testing all of your Black Friday, Cyber Monday campaigns the week before, just so you're not rushing at the last minute to make sure that those are all working. So we'll talk a little bit more about those seasonal sale pages that I mentioned that Google called out. Um, so this is the um, deals carousel that I mentioned that they announced. And so um, they ask for um, a image in the header, the specific ratio so that you can get this lovely image in the banner. Um, they ask for a specific title tag format. So we recommend something like Black Friday 2021 deals plus your brand or plus your main product. So if you are a kitchen store, say like, you know, kitchen supplies or something like that, um, make sure that you have bot text on the page, body content. Um, and again, just make sure that they are in the footer or the sale flyout um, mid to late September or by next week, let's say. Coupon pages. So again, I'll make the plea for coupon pages. Um, create them even if you don't offer them. Um, again, we were looking for great examples today to send to a client. And I was thinking, I was like, a lot of the coupon pages that I see are really not attractive, but they still do well. Um, like even if you look at Nordstrom's, it's just blocks of text. So I think you could probably do better, but don't let the pressure of creating something amazing looking hold you back from creating this and just capturing that additional brand traffic to your site for holiday. Um, throw some text up there and we can revisit in the new year as needed. So here's another example um, of one of those coupon pages. So you have your brand name, coupons and promo codes. That's kind of our recommended title format. Um, linking it from the footer, great. Little bit of content on there. Um, and again, we usually recommend any current coupon codes. Um, a lot of times clients will put their sign up forms for email or SMS on there and be like, coupons are only available for our subscribers. Um, links to sale pages or top categories is a great thing to put on there to just give it a little more um, content to make it look a little better. But like I said, don't let the pressure of making it look beautiful kind of holds you back from getting something live for holiday. Awesome. So looking more into holiday specific landing pages, um, we want to have that content updated probably no later than, you know, we're past early October, so probably mid-October um, by the end of the month at the latest. Um, so some recommendations and things that we see do well, making sure that you're mentioning the current year um, in the copy, so 2021. Um, for any collection pages that do well during holiday, but maybe aren't holiday specific, um, you know, maybe add, add in just a quick paragraph talking about holiday or Black Friday deals on your um, cell phones that you're selling, and you can remove that after the holiday season. Um, and then for any blog posts that are very holiday specific, maybe refresh those again with the year and some additional like new 2021 themed content and just have that published date reflect the latest date that it was pushed live. Um, you'll get that freshness benefit by having that new blog content and it's an easy way rather than rewriting completely new posts, you're kind of piggybacking off of posts that may have already had success, already have age and authority and just making them better for the new season. Looking at your top holiday products. Um, so 
For these, again, make sure that you are updating any content as needed, giving it a refresh. Um, if it's not unique, you know, if you're pushing your product content out to Amazon or other marketplaces, refresh it on your own site. Um, so that it does stand out and you do have a better chance of ranking higher on your own page than a marketplace. Um, the cool thing is that Google calls out like what they define as a high quality product page within their quality rater guidelines. So um, things that they want to see, they want to see your manufacturer's product specs as well as original product information. There, Google said it. <laughs> they want their unique content on the product pages as well. Get that done. Um, they're looking for a high count of user reviews. Like they consider that to be high quality content, useful content for shoppers. Um, that's where, you know, coordination with email can come in, you know, making sure that people are getting those prompts to leave product reviews um, on the site, making sure uh, that the product reviews are visible, that they're crawlable, that they're indexable. Um, all of that's really important on a product page. Um, Google also calls out, providing shipping and returns information within that product page. So a lot of sites you'll see, they have like the accordions of maybe product description and then additional details, and then they'll have shipping and returns information. Anywhere you can get your shipping and returns information on the page, that would be great. A lot of people just link to it from the footer, um, but Google does call that out as an example of something that they consider a high quality product page, making it easier for the user to see exactly how and when they can return and exchange items. Um, and then multiple images of the product as well. Um, having more than one, more than two, they don't give a specific number, um, but you know, three to four, four Im images per product um, would be a good number to have. Um, you know, you're not gonna get all of those done probably before holiday at this point, if you don't already have that. Um, but maybe prioritize like your top sellers and then see how they perform in terms of conversion rate versus those pages that you didn't update the number of um, product photos on. Cool. And sign up forms, Faith, you know more about this than me. <laughs> Hello again, everyone. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, and also, I really love your, your topic point about there's a lot that we're diving into today, so try not to feel overwhelmed by the amount of the things that we're suggesting that you can and should be doing. Let's work on prioritizing and making sure we're focused on what you can accomplish this year, what's going to have the best return on investment for your time. Sign up forms, definitely top of that list, really from our perspective. We want to make sure that you're capitalizing on all that extra traffic that's going to be going to your website through your paid channels, through your SEO initiatives, through whatever other marketing channels that you have. Um, all that hard work, all that money invested is going to pay off now in Q4. We want to make sure we capitalize on the extra traffic by having an audience that we can actually talk to after this holiday season as well, not just through the holiday season or not just you know, on that particular day that they're on your website. So sign up forms for your email and SMS list are going to be a huge component of what you should be doing here in Q4 for the holidays. You want to make sure that you are collecting proper consent and that you have um, your sign up forms really optimized in a number of different ways, you know, for device type and for collecting the appropriate kind of content that um, is the, the, the appropriate kind of information, I suppose, that is useful for what you want to do in 2022. So thinking ahead, honestly, to what those plans are. Um, so if you want to be able to set up things like a, you know, birthday automation so that you send people out a reward for their birthday, you need to start collecting that information. Um, but one step at a time, we'll dial it back. Just make sure you're collecting their email address, you're collecting their phone numbers, you are um, collecting proper consent for both of those things as well. Think through, though, um, anything around the incentive that you might be offering to ensure that they actually do submit the forms, that they do double opt in and confirm all their information um, before you actually go live with any of those changes. And like Rebecca said, we're sending over the deck, so I won't go through every single best practice bullet point. We will be here all day. Um, those are for you to kind of take home and digest and let us know if you have any questions after the fact, and we can dive in um, with our team of strategists to talk to you more about how that particularly applies to your business. Okay. 
Okay, we have some examples in here as well. We are a platinum partner with Clavio and we're, we are par partnered with other email and SMS platforms as well, but wanted to give you some um, insight into other high performing sign up forms. These are some of their winners from 2020. Don't have 2021 winners yet, unfortunately, but uh, these are really, really successful sign up forms. So things like high contrast, being aware of accessibility, definitely important for your website, for your emails, for your sign up forms, for your emails and SMS. Um, making sure you're asking the right questions, maybe not too many questions at once. Um, there are ways where you can kind of reach back out after you get them to fill in that initial sign-up forms. There are ways where you can trigger sign-up forms to then ask them for more information after the fact um, or send out surveys through email or SMS. Um, making sure that you're just kind of doing some testing during this time period as well, um, assuming that you're on a platform that will allow you to do some sort of testing. Besides sign-up forms, we want to make sure for the holiday you have a really strong campaign strategy. Um, really, this is your opportunity to dazzle your subscribers. So not just keeping time top of mind, not just keeping ahead of your competitors, but making sure that they are fully informed on whatever promotions you have running. If you have promotions, you don't necessarily have to to have a successful Q4. Um, but making sure people are just totally in the know that they are getting value out of your emails, that you're talking to the right people with the right content. Thinking ahead in terms of, okay, are we segmenting our audience? Do we know what the topics are that we want to send out to these people? Um, if you can solidify that part of the plan of these are the people we do want to reach out to and this is what we want to tell them, then the rest of it will really fall into place in terms of the timing of those campaigns that are going out and potentially the promotions that are included in them as well. In addition to campaigns, want to make sure you have a really strong foundation on automations going into Q4. This is actually probably what's going to do the heavy lifting in terms of your email and SMS channels here. Uh, because a lot of people are so busy during the holidays um, between work and the actual holidays and celebrating and just being a normal human being, um, they have a lot going on. They're juggling a lot in their lives. So they can oftentimes forget about things that are going on. And it's good for the automations to do that heavy lifting of triggering right when they do something or with an appropriate time delay on it. That's appropriate for them specifically. Sending out a lot of kind of cart reminders, for instance, um, will play a big role in Q4. Um, also things like a, a browse abandonment. We'll get into that a little bit on the next slide. Um, there's just a few foundational automations that you really want to hone in on and have prepared going into Q4. Um, you can also though think about some extra special holiday specific type automations that maybe you don't have running year round, um, but if you actually do Think ahead in terms of your sign-up forms. One of the questions you could potentially be asking, or um, necessarily this is exact wording, but asking if they are shopping for themselves, if they're shopping for somebody else. Understanding that distinction in your audience will actually go a long way in terms of um, your success in your email campaigns and automations and the wording that you choose to use and the kind of visuals that you choose to use moving forward with them. Um, if they're looking for gift ideas specifically, you can certainly set up a special automation track with gift ideas. And that way you don't have to worry about every single day sending out some sort of email campaign to those specific people. Set it up in advance and just let it crank out through the season. We've identified four of the most high priority automations that you really should have up and running. Honestly, year round, but extra special importance here in Q4. Um, your initial kind of welcome series, that onboarding series, really where they learn about your business and learn about your brand. Um, that's going to be a really big engagement builder for you. And that's going to be important, like we said, with the sign up forms, the extra traffic coming to your website. A lot of people who are coming are going to be coming for the first time. And they're probably going to be signing up for your list, maybe because they're expecting some sort of either notification in advance about holiday deals or they want to get discounts or on their first purchase or whatever it is. Um, so that welcome series is really important to have set up right at that beginning. So as soon as they're signing up from, from your sign up forms you've implemented, they're getting some really nice touch points with your brand. And then that will help keep them beyond just Q4 timeframe. It'll help keep them into Q1 as well. Things like your abandoned cart, definitely want to have a strong abandoned cart series. 
not just a single email. Um, and then moving on past that, sorry, I think there's a delay with my clicker a little bit. Thanks. Um, I think Nick, maybe you solved that for me. Um, but the there's also a browse and a post purchase that you should also be focused on. The browse is especially um, beneficial in terms of people who maybe have never purchased from you before. They're not quite sure about your products, about your brand, and we want to make sure that they um, they get to learn more about you and they get kind of pinged with a reminder. And that post purchase once again building up that relationship and then moving into kind of cross selling from there. On the promo side, though, want to support your promotions, certainly through campaigns and through automations where it makes sense, and even talk about them in the sign up forms that we already mentioned about incentives and explaining to people why they should sign up for your email and SMS list. Um, the important thing I want to say about promotions is take a good hard look at what your profit margins are on your products. Um, they may vary from product to product or category to category, depending on how much depth you have to your product lines that you're offering. Um, but take a good hard look at what that is. Take a look at whatever data you have previously from other promotions to see is there a tipping point around, you know, is 10% off enough to get people to buy? Typically, is 20% off enough to get people to buy? Whatever you end up deciding on for your promotions, just make sure that it does serve your business. You know, don't feel like you have to push for 50 or 60% off or 75% off, um, you know, for a Black Friday deal if your business can't support that. We want to make sure that promotions are still profitable for you. Um, we try to think about a few different kinds of angles on promotions. Don't necessarily shy away from A-B testing promotions this time of year or testing out promotions with different types of audiences, perhaps giving your VIP subscribers either early access to the same sale that you're going to be launching to everyone else or giving them maybe an extra addition to the sale. So maybe everyone else gets 20% off, your VIPs get 25% off, something like that. A um, bunch of different ways you can identify your VIP audience as well. So I'll leave that leave that up to you to figure out or with one of our specialists, but a lot of conversation. We could be here for another two hours just talking about that, I'm sure. Um, yeah, and I think we're good on the promotion side. Sorry, just double checking the slide. Perfect, thank you. And then um, in terms of best practices here, so we wanna be thinking about cross-selling. If we really wanna get into the weeds to more kind of advanced tactics, Let's take a look at people who purchase every year around Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Let's make sure we have a track kind of built out for those people. Let's also take a look at people who purchase maybe um, your main best selling type of products, but they don't purchase anything else. Let's maybe try and find a way to give them a promotion that gets them cross sold into other areas. Um, let's also make sure that we're leveraging your dynamic content to keep these emails, those text messages as personalized as possible not in like a cheesy fake kind of way but where it's going to add value so reminding people say of what they had purchased previously and saying you know we really think that these things you would like because of that previous purchase that can certainly be helpful and go a long way in terms of increasing your click rates to your website and therefore your conversion rates and increase that revenue Last thing that we want to talk about here on email and SMS, super important, copy and creative, do not overlook these. These are your friends. Um, so in terms of copy, a couple of things you want to kind of point out, being more um, general in your terminology around the holidays this typically does perform better from what we've seen in our clients' accounts, unless you are selling something that is specific to a holiday like Hanukkah or Christmas, in which case it would certainly make sense for you to include that terminology in your emails. Something more general tends to actually perform better, including more kind of wintry themes will actually also help extend past just what the Hanukkah dates are, the Christmas dates are. Um, it'll help your promotional strategy extend through the, all of Q4, um, so it seems more timely as well as on your graphics, keeping things more wintry um, will also help. So you don't have to keep churning out new graphics that are very specific to only one day. You can reuse some of your assets if you just kind of plan ahead to be slightly more vague in this particular way. Um, you also want to make sure that if there are any um, changes, especially around shipping, that you are communicating those very effectively and clearly to your audience, whether that's through your Sign up forms, campaigns, automation flows, you want to make sure you update that copy to reflect any changes around turnaround time. Um, if you can normally, you know, ship out an order the same day, but it's Q4 and you're expecting three times as many orders, 
um, and you can't ship them all out the same day, make sure that you're setting those expectations really appropriately here. Um, and then also some ideas, you can try out GIFs in terms of creative. I know you normally probably do a lot of static images, but GIFs are also something to um, A-B test during the holidays. Nick, all you. Awesome. Uh, hopefully that was really helpful content, guys. And it's uh, it's hard to, to suss through all the ideas that are out there for, for email and SMS, but if you get the basics down, um, obviously that's going to help the most. Um, Many of you are probably wondering why do we focus on owned media? We typically do uh, SEO or Amazon or Google, so we're, can we focus on paid and and um, and earned media? Why do we talk about owned media so much uh, for today? And it's it's been a long time coming um, that every marketer, every e-commerce business owner should really be paying much more close attention to owned media and first party. But we're seeing kind of a a transition, a, a change of pressures in our weather system that are telling us we have to do this. And just as a recap of that, GDPR in 2016 was basically asking um, the European market to ensure that people are truly opted in into a database. It was starting to reconsider whether people um, have given enough permission to get marketed to. Um, when the CCPA rules came out in 2018, it was very similar to GDPR, except that CCPA started to say, well, it's hard to enforce um, the type of rules GDPR came up with unless we are dictating a protocol for database management. So most of CCPA was about um, basically governing your data and making it organized in a way where if a request comes down from someone that I don't want to be part of this, re remove all my, my data, that there's an established protocol for that. During the beginning of COVID, um, internet usage increased to levels that we had really never seen before. And at the same time, people were starting to think a lot about and hear a lot about the concern of privacy, uh, public sentiment about privacy, but about third party data, specifically data that was you don't have permission to have express permission. Um, people started to get weary of that when the big four met in March um, of this year with Congress, um, the entire narrative tipped and people started to realize when you're using Facebook or Google, that's not the, pro the product. The user is the product. It's the user that's being sold to advertisers. And this is really throwing things into um, a new era of what is okay, what is going to be the future, how do we use things like data on our customers and our engagers to deploy the type of marketing technologies and dynamic logic that has been constructed over the last 10 plus years. What we I can basically see at this point though, is ad platforms, operating systems, browsers, with what's being litigated, what's being interrogated is not first party data. It's everything beyond that. So your own website is still your website. Um, your email database, your SMS database, your customer database, as long as it was organized correctly and collected correctly, it's still yours to have. And all the litigation is everywhere else. If this is the only island we can stand on in the future, then we need to know how we can get the most out of it. Perfecting your use of first party data this year, this holiday season, will make you a master of the only weapon that will be allowed in the future. 
And if you're confused at all about what first party versus third party data is, it, it's still important to understand this, right? If um, someone has explicitly given you permission to have this information or, or explicitly acted in a way where they had the expectation that you're gonna know that data, login history, language preference, passwords, um, purchases, those are data points where there's the customer has a, a good expectation that you're going to log all that. They want you to have your order history in there, right? But third party data is data that's aggregated, inferred, uh, observed, but it wasn't permission. So all that data is going to start going away. Um, so we need to be a little bit more cognizant of first party. It's a good time to also note that when you're using Facebook ads, when you're using Google ads, you can upload your first party data into Facebook and into Google ads and retarget. On Facebook specifically, when you're uploading your customer database into Facebook, do not do it as a lump sum. You should do it strategically. So you want to separate for ways that you might want to target people individually. So anyone who bought um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday over the last five years, that can be a segment that you upload specifically. Um, you also want to create segments that you can kind of understand this segment is my most recent acquisitions or these people are interested in something um, specific. Uh, you want to probably um, have a list of people who have the wrong habit that you don't like, like customers that return things all the time, if you don't want to market to them as much. And then top spenders that you can target more aggressively. You can also use Facebook's algorithm to find similar people through lookalike engines. So just as you are creating your segments for email and SMS, you should be doing the same for Google Ads and Facebook, and there's a rubric to follow in terms of how that segmentation strategy is derived. Um, we're going to close this up by just telling you guys a little bit about ourselves. Um, we are a leading provider of holistic marketing. We've been doing this for 24 years. We have playbooks that we, we deploy for clients. We have technology that we built that helps us do a better job of being consistent in similar situations. We've been building up our company and our data science and our capabilities and our, our departments over the course of all these 24 years. We have strong partnerships with virtually everyone in the e-commerce ecosystem. We consider ourselves to be um, highly integrated, if not the most integrated omni-channel partner out there. We have clients that we're very proud of. Um, here's a handful of clients that we manage. We have departments that include email and SMS, um, but also conversion consulting and testing, SEO, Google Ads, Google Shopping, all the marketplaces and all of social. We are a performance agency, which means numbers matter to us and that's all that really matters from our, our key perspective. We can help with a lot of other objectives, but at the end of the day, if you're looking for a partner who can obsess over numbers and achieve numbers through their playbook and technology, that's what we built for 20 plus years. We offer deployment of our playbook and access to our technology, either in a full service capacity or deployed through your team, through consulting. We develop uh, a data engine for every client that brings in all of your data, Google Ads, Google Analytics, Bing, Facebook, Amazon, all into one system so that we can key off of that workflows, our reporting, better feed data. And just on the action side, you know, being able to, to filter through and collate data in a more meaningful way, put into workflows saying, this data is telling us to do some action. It's a workflow. Make sure those workflow reports go to the right people and make sure anytime there's a problem, a red flag, is automatically being sent to the right individuals. This is harnessing data science 
for real e-commerce purpose for better performance. Um, we'll close out before we get our questions with an offer. If anyone is interested in finding a partner that can figure out how to grow your business better, um, we have a plan for that. We have an approach to that. And typically, you know, this is all done before someone signs on with us. We don't charge for it. We go through a pretty extensive process. We start off with trying to identify, you know, what's so special about your business? If we had a million dollars, why would we invest it in your business? What about your founders, your X Factor, your competitors? What do we need to know? And then as we look at these competitors and your X Factors, um, what strengths are we playing against? What strengths do we bring to the table already? Where we can look at everyone's SEO, their Google ads side, their Facebook approach, their website experience. We start to discover what your current investment distribution strategy is. And whether it's holding you back from achieving the objectives that you hope to achieve in the next three to 12 months, and maybe how the investment shape should change to achieve your objectives. We identify whether you're protecting your brand, conquesting against your competitors, and how pervasive you are in your discovery world. We start thinking about how to activate behavior in your customers. What persona should we imbibe into your advertising and experience? What cognitive fact-based or affect feeling-based recall can we create with your customers to get micro milestones of movement in the right direction? How are your competitors and how are you using email, SMS, and social? We have tools to figure out what everyone's doing and then see what we're supposed to do. We'll think about the, the data science side, the reporting that might be required for us to, to really grow your business. We do all this for you at no cost. It's just a way for us to plan this stuff out. And if we are chosen as your partner, then we can go ahead and start to implement or have your teach implement with the guidance of our playbooks, our analysis, and our technology. So we're asking, um, are you looking for potentially this type of plan? A lot of you will hopefully just kind of hold off, right? You're saying, I want an agency that can do a better job for 2022, um, but I, I need to get through a holiday season first. That's perfectly fine. Um, happy to, to start the conversation now, try to figure out some timing, take a little bit of this work off your plate. While you focus on holidays, we focus on planning. And now we'll get to questions. So um, gonna go ahead and shut this poll down in three, two, one. Thank you folks. And let's see here. Um, Faith Rebecca, can you guys see the question from Sarah? Yes, I was just looking that. Let me, I guess, turn my camera back on so you can all see me. Yep, I was just looking at that question. Great question, by the way, Sarah, in terms of um, really getting into the specifics and making this more of an advanced kind of plan here. So Sarah had asked, what would be a good email to send to people who purchased last year during Black Friday, Cyber Monday? How would it be different than the general emails for Black Friday, Cyber Monday that would be going out this year to kind of the, the fuller list? Um, so a few things to kind of touch on here. One, I want to point out that it is this is totally optional, depending on how much bandwidth you have for your team and your priorities and what your goals are. So you don't have to send different emails to people who purchased last year. It's a bit more advanced strategy for people who have things kind of built out already. Um, so if that's the case for you, though, really excited. We have some ideas and some thoughts on this. Um, really, a lot of it's going to come down to the subtlety of the copy and potentially even the graphics in your email um, to, in a way, build that kind of relationship with them and leverage the data that you have to make sure that it is as applicable to these people as possible. So that's where the personalization, the dynamic content 
kind of comes into play. So if we know that they purchased last year, um, and if we know that they haven't purchased since, like if they're only a holiday shopper, or only seasonal for this particular time period, then we can use that. Um, we can infer potentially some things about them depending on what they had purchased. We can make very specific product recommendations to them based on that data. And you can also give them very, um, not personalized in, in terms of it being actually just for this one particular person, but you can have a few kind of categories of different promotions that you would offer based on that kind of data and like what bucket that they had fit into. So say that they only purchase during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, typically, um, you know, one or more years and um, they purchase, you know what I mean, product line. Okay, now you want to, your goal is you want to try and get them to purchase again. They're not probably going to purchase the same exact thing. So what are the other things you can recommend to them? Take a look at your catalog and say, okay, you know, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we're giving you early access to a, an extra promotion and it's going to be 10% off of these particular products that we think you're really going to like. In the copy being very subtle about, you know, we see you, we hear you, we understand you, we appreciate you. Kind of surprise and delight them, personalize that experience to them, make sure they understand these are, uh, it's a personalized kind of promotion, it's a personalized recommendation, it's not something you're sending to everyone. That will help build the relationship and that will go a long way beyond just Q4, quite honestly, not just here in the revenue season. That's awesome. Um, the only other question we have is no questions, already a satisfied client, um, which is great. Thanks, Tully, from upstate New York. Um, I think that's it, folks. Uh, well, hopefully, this was helpful. If you had a few ideas that might help guide you over the next few weeks. Rebecca, Faith, thank you so much for putting together this content. Thank you guys for, for spending time with us. We've got a lot of webinars coming up over the next few weeks, so we'll see you there. Thank you, everyone. Happy Wednesday.